This video will cover a solution guide to problem 26 from chapter 10. The bowling ball rolls without slipping up a ramp that slopes upward at an angle beta to the horizontal. Treat the ball as a uniform solid sphere and ignore the finger holes. Draw the free body diagram for the ball. Explain why the frictional force must be directed uphill. What is the acceleration of the center of mass of the ball, and what is the minimum coefficient of static friction needed to prevent slipping? In order to draw the free body diagram and explain the direction of the frictional force, we need to make sure we have a clear understanding of how the ball is moving. The ball is moving up the incline, so its linear velocity is also up the incline. Knowing this, it should be clear to see that the ball is rotating clockwise in this picture. In other words, the ball's angular velocity is into the screen. Because we know that the linear acceleration in this scenario will be down the incline, we know that the ball is slowing down as it moves to the right. So now having a solid understanding of what is happening in the problem, let's start drawing our free body diagram. There are three forces acting on the ball. Two of those forces are acting on the center of mass, the normal force, and gravity. Friction is acting on the part of the ball that is in contact with the surface of the incline, but for the sake of argument, let's say we don't know if it will be acting up or down the incline. How can we figure out which way friction will act? Like was mentioned earlier, the ball is rotating clockwise as it moves up the incline, telling us that the angular velocity is into the screen. We also noted that the ball was slowing down as it moved upward. This tells us that angular acceleration is in the opposite direction of angular velocity, meaning angular acceleration needs to be out of the screen. We know that torque is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. It is also defined as the cross product between the displacement of forces away from the pivot point of an object and the force acting on the object. Because the normal force and gravitational forces are acting on the center of mass, neither of them will exert a torque on the ball. All of the torque on the ball is being caused by friction. So basically, the direction of the cross product between the force of friction and its displacement from the center needs to be in the direction of the angular acceleration. There are a couple ways to visualize this. You can simply use the right hand rule, or you can try to imagine which way our two frictional forces currently on our diagram would try and rotate the ball. Using the right hand rule, if you line your fingers up with the radius vector so that your thumb is pointing out toward you, you will find that the only way you can keep your thumb pointing that way while curling your fingers towards one of the frictional forces is if the force of friction is acting up the incline. However, if you happen to forget about the right hand rule, you can just use your imagination. Let's look at the red vector frictional force. If you imagine this force pulling on the ball, it would try to rotate the ball clockwise. This would mean that the angular acceleration would be in the same direction as the angular velocity, and the ball would actually be speeding up as it moved up the incline. Of course, since nothing is pulling the ball up the incline, this is nonsense. Now imagine the green vector frictional force pulling on the ball. It would try to rotate the ball counterclockwise. This would make the angular acceleration point in the opposite direction to the angular velocity, causing the ball to slow as it moves up the incline. This matches what we said would happen, so we know that the force of friction has to be up the incline. Now that we know what the free body diagram looks like, we can try to find the acceleration of the center of mass. Like we've done so many times before, we will extract the equation of motion for the extraction using Newton's second law. I've decided that the positive extraction will be down the incline, just for the sake of simplicity. Doing so gives that the x component of the gravitational force, minus the force of friction, is equal to the mass of the ball multiplied by its center of mass acceleration. Because the problem neglected to tell us what the coefficient of friction was between the ball and the surface, we need to find another way to determine the frictional force before we can solve for the acceleration. The force of friction is tangent to the surface of the ball, so we can use the definition of torque to say that the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration is equal to the force of friction multiplied by the radius of the ball. Recalling the definitions for angular acceleration and the moment of inertia of a sphere, we can sub those into our equation for the torque and rearrange to find an expression for the force of friction. We can now return to our Newton's second law equation. If we plug our new expression for friction into our equation of motion, we get that the x component of the gravitational force minus two-fifths of the mass times acceleration equals the mass multiplied by acceleration. Right away it's clear to see that the mass of the ball will cancel out and you're left with an equation with all known variables and the acceleration of the center of mass. Isolating our center of mass acceleration, we find that the ball's center of mass will be accelerating at 5 sevenths g sine beta. We now want to find the minimum coefficient of static friction that will be needed to keep this ball from slipping. We want the ball to roll, not slide, so we need a coefficient of static friction large enough to keep the ball rolling. From a previous chapter, we have the definition that the force of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. 
There are quite a few unknowns buried in this little equation, but the goal is to only have one, the coefficient of static friction. From part b, we already have an expression for the frictional force. We also solved for an expression for the center of mass acceleration. So the only unknown left to figure out before we start solving for the coefficient of static friction is the normal force. To find the normal force, we will need the y-direction equation of motion. From the free body diagram, we see that the normal force subtracted from the y component of the gravitational force is equal to zero since there is no movement in the y direction. Rearranging for the normal force, we see that the normal force is simply the y component of the gravitational force. Subbing in our expressions for our two forces into the definition for static friction, we find that two-fifths mass times acceleration has to be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the y component of the gravitational force. Now we can plug in the expression we found in the previous part for the acceleration of the center of mass. Simplifying and rearranging slightly, we see that the coefficient needs to be at least 2 sevenths times the tangent of the angle of the incline in order to keep the ball rolling. 